Now, criticism comes from two camps about the historicity of Jesus. One of them will surprise you. We have mythicists such as Acharyas, also known as D.M. Murdoch, or D.M. Murdoch, also known as uh, D.M. Murdoch, also known as Acharyas, and uh, oh, what's that guy's name? <laughs> I, I think my tongue. Uh, Peter Joseph used his stuff. Oh, I forget his name. Uh, Peter Joseph, the guy that made Zeitgeist. These mythicists claimed of Jesus is Mithras and Jesus is Horus. They've been just shot down horribly. I mean, just debunked in the most savage way, just destroyed. A, nobody accepts these now. Not even other mythicists. Although it, it, their ranks are rapidly decreasing. Um, but, uh, again, I'm, I'm searching for the guy's name. It was just, I just had it before, um, before I started this. Uh, I probably should have said his name first. But another attack of, of trying to develop historist, uh, trying to look at the historicity of Jesus uh, comes from another group. And I was shocked at this. Um, as I speak, I'm going to try to look up the guy's name. Jordan Maxwell. I didn't even have to look up his name. I just clicked on Google. And Jordan Maxwell is the guy that Peter Trust relies on. I mean, I mean, ridiculous. So if you want to go uh, see how badly he gets his ass beat or debunked um check out uh labarum 312 uh james white actually debated a myth assistant i mean it, the guy was almost in tears he just destroyed um because i guess he's used to uh debating rubes and uh while i vehemently degree, disagree with james white's calvinism uh he really shreds uh, the mythicist, which you don't really have to have that much knowledge to do. I mean, you just have to look at any history behind it. It, it, it just falls apart right away to a shocking degree. I, I mean, that's like saying Hitler invaded the United States. You, you just need to look and, oh, he didn't. Um, but another other hostile group towards the historicity of Christ is fundamentalists. Now, my first, uh, <laughs> they, they think you should just take the Bible on faith and the Bible is correct because the Bible says it's correct. No, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> as if uh, in Timothy, when Paul's writing, you know, except the veracity of scripture, you know, it's good for uh, teaching. Which, good for teaching doesn't mean historically happened. And they think somehow the King James Bible, or at least the books of the King James Bible that they have, that canon, uh, that Paul meant that, that he kind of saw outside of space and time and knew that this would be the canon, even though it was the canon only for the West the Western Protestants, that is. Um, even though he would have been using the Greek um, Old Testament, which would have had wisdom and Maccabees in there. Uh, so they think you should take it on just faith, which Christian no Abrahamic religion is based on just faith. They, they make certain claims that these things happened in history. And that certain people need to exist, in order for this to be true. And if they didn't exist or they, things didn't go on in a certain way, then the religion collapses. That there are certain falsifiable things. And I don't mean falsifiable as in they were fabricated, but falsifiable in a scientific way. They're falsifiably true. They can be shown as true. Um, the Israelites did exist in Canaan before the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar and the Israels did exist in northern Canaan before 
uh, the invasion of Sennacherib. These are known. Uh, but my question to the fundamentalists is, what do you think we're going to find? If they're terrified of any historical investigation into did Jesus exist or what the archaeological information says or what manuscript information says, terrified. Just like they would rather use manuscripts from, they would rather use the first critical, uh, the first critical edition of any manuscripts, which is known as the Textus Receptus. That's the first critical one. Uh, match. I think they had five manuscripts in the that were informed the Textus Receptus, um, and then say, "Oh, critical editions are bad." because there's older manuscripts from Alexandria, and then they have to make up uh, a false history saying that, oh, uh, Alexandria downplayed uh, Christ's deity, when in fact it was the exact opposite. Uh, Alexandria um, taught Christ's divinity at the expense of his humanity, and Antioch taught his humanity at the expense of his deity. Um, by viewing which heresies come out of which uh, which see so it's kind of strange what do you think we're going to find <laughs> it's it's an insecurity thing this is why they've said kjv is the only bible some of them say i mean it's not necessarily the K king james onlyists but some of them the kjv is the only bible because we need to have certainty in this area because it's idolatry. It, it, it's not. It's not basing things on the teaching of the church or, or even the message of Christ or any creed or statement of faith. As you know, Christ is risen, or um, Christ is the Messiah. Christ is you know, Christ is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. They, they can't. They, there's no affirming anything except the King James Bible is the is the Bible, the only Bible that that God endorses, and their evidence for this is. Miseducation, ignorance, and stupidity uh, heaped upon hate and just just their own brutal hatred is what endorses this. Because they can't look at any other evidence. And any other evidence that comes out of the mouth that's not of their personal private preacher is nothing. Even if every single bit of evidence and information and data speaks to the opposite, they can't believe that which they're not even believing Christ or the Bible, they're believing a certain transmission of it and a certain view of that transmission um, created hundreds of years after the transmission. Basically, this was never a view until uh, the RSV was, uh, was published, the Revised Standard Version. Until that, there was no nobody who read King James said this is the only Bible that exists. And when I say that, I mean, even for every other language, they say the King James is the only Bible, and if you want to read the Bible, you have to read the King James. No translations allowed. Sorry, everyone who doesn't speak English. You're screwed. And uh, usually they interpret through a very ignorant lens. They don't even know what it meant in Jacobean. So they're going on, you have to accept our modern and misinterpreting what the words say not even understanding jacobean so it's a 21st century rendering of jacobean um or i should say mistranslation rendering of jacobean um so so it just which would which would destroy them if, if they knew anything of history or languages um so these are the two hostile camps towards um looking at christ and of the mythicists, it's it's very odd. Um, they're almost scared of the information, as if if you could prove a historical Jesus existed, that would mean he was the Christ. He rose from the dead. He was born of a virgin. No, that wouldn't. That would just say, oh, that's the accepted history that everybody's been going by forever, and that that doesn't necessarily mean that he was Christ, it just meant he got crucified to a cross and died, and his followers thought something happened. 
Um, so I'm suspect of the reasons for why both of those. For the the first camp being, you're acting like if we showed any, if there's any evidence that Jesus existed, then he must have been the Christ and the God and the Nicene Creed's true, and so are all the creeds of Christendom, which doesn't logically follow. But then again, they're not using logic. And then the second camp, who's not using logic either, is almost afraid of what they're to find out. So in each case, it looks like there's forbidden knowledge there, which I say, screw you to forbidden knowledge. Knowledge should be accessible to everybody in that there is no such thing as forbidden knowledge, only closed minds. Um, so accepting Jesus' historical character says nothing of his divinity. It just says what the historical record says. Um, so... These are the two veins of ignorance that I struggle with. Um, and they, their attitude betrays their fear of the light, fear of the truth, fear of knowledge. Um, sadly, as many, many, many religious people truly are superstitious, truly are afraid of, all right, I, I know what I know, I don't want to see any more kind of thing, which to me, I don't know why they would, if it's something so vital, even if you're just believing in God because you fear death, wouldn't you want one, I mean, that's like saying, this Coke can can save me from death, and wait, you know it can't, but if you just put enough faith in that, maybe it will, it's, I, I don't understand that, which is why it's always intrigued me, why do people believe what they believe, it, it seems so strange, um, people bashing um, get-rich-quick schemes and then buying a lottery ticket. I don't understand that. Or people saying, well, we know that global warming is going to come in, in a quick time, or we know that an ice age will come immediately when then in the same breath they'll bash every weatherman saying, oh, they're always inaccurate. Um... type of thing. That's not saying there, there isn't going to be an, an ice age sooner. There isn't going to be um, global warming or that global warming is not happening. But of their kind of, they can hold these two things and they don't seem to, you would think just the, their day-to-day -day critical view of things would inform these massive overarching views, but they don't. It just seems strange to me. Um, So I'll go in more on the mythicists, which, and that's, that's, you'll see by the end of the King Arthur thing, that's, that's basically what I'm trying to do, um, or at least that's an aspect of it. All right, take it easy, peace to you, um, may God save Serbia, Syria, and Ireland.